Hello, my name is Jeff Rush, and this talk is a demonstration walkthrough of the IPython interactive shell. If you missed it, there is a prior five-minute presentation that provides a features and benefits overview in a slideshow format. Divided into five parts, this talk in the series will cover tab completion, namespace management, logging, the help system, and introspection. Let's get started. Start up a shell here. Bring up the IPython interpreter. All right, looks like the normal Python shell, but uh, it's got some extra features. You can do the usual variable assignment, just to give us something to play with here. Okay, but we also have the tab completion. I can type in part of a variable name. It will offer me the choice when I hit the tab key and I can have it finish it and print out the value. Now, IPython offers uh, namespace management features. For example, I've defined these variables. I can type the who command and it will list the variables that are available to me. Maybe I only know that it's an integer, so I want to see only the two, in two value variables that are uh, integers. But I also sometimes want to see the types and values so it can be a little easier. So we have the who's command. See, it gives us much more detail here. And then there are times when you want to search by name. So we can say we want to find all the variables that are starting with message or that start with message but are of type integer. So the pSearch command is useful for that. We also have the store command, which lets us store into the profile the current value of the message flag. The profile is basically your startup configuration. It's your current directory, a file in your current directory, usually. And uh, so it's useful to be able to store your variables there. The next time you start your session, they're, uh, they're back again. And you can also store that variable into a separate file. To see what has been stored, we can enter the store command. And we have a, here an ABC macro that I have left to find from a previous session. And message flag is now there. Now, the namespace can be cleared with the reset command. So we can see. We have the who command that shows us the variables. We reset. Ask to make sure that we're sure we're going to do this. I say, yep. And then we tap the who command, and the namespace is empty. And then I can tell it to please restore those things that were stored. Now, not all the variables were stored. And then I can say who and message flag and the ABC macro are back again. And if I get tired of that, I can type store-z, which zeroes out all of the storage. So the next time I start my session, there won't be any values left lying around. One of the features of IPython also is the logging. At the moment, logging is not on. So I tell it that I wish to start logging so that we can uh, see keep a record of this. We can see here it stores it in the current directory of ipythonlog.py. The log is stored as a Python source file. It will rotate across versions, so each time I, I start a session that I'm logging, it will uh, give it a, a, a suffix of a number and bump it to the next one. And logging also lets you uh, optionally log the output of your commands or just the what you type in. At the moment, I'm just logging the input. And you can put timestamps if you'd like. Okay. And during your session, you can say log on, which is not a user login, but rather turn on the log, which it's already on, or you can turn it off. So I'll, I'm going to leave it on here. Okay, these commands I've been entering are called uh, magic commands. Basically, they are commands named functions built into IPython. We can get a complete list of what is defined by typing the ls magic command. And we see here a quite a few commands that are available to us. We're going to be going through these, most of them. Magic commands can be typed with a percent sign as the first character, 
or not. The difference is that if you have a variable that is the same as a magic command, you need to put the percent at the beginning of it to differentiate whether you're talking to the command or talking about the variable. To get information about these commands that are available, we can type the magic, notice not ls magic, but just magic, and it gives us a scrolling help about the commands. I'm not going to read them all here right now, but uh, I'm just saying the help is available. And hit Q, so it takes you into your normal pager, uh, ability to look, uh, uh, move through pages or something. Uh, if you want to get help on a particular command, however, so, uh, so like the LS magic, you can type a name of something and hit one question mark, which gives me a uh, a generic or a, a high-level view of the object. So LS magic we can see here is a magic function and that it takes uh, no significant arguments here and lists currently available magic functions. Uh, you can also type in double question mark to get more information. In this case it shows us the source code for this magic command. for our own variables, like the message flag if you recall, that I defined, it was an integer. So it tells us basically about the int uh, initializer. It's more interesting with uh, uh, functions as we'll see shortly. Okay, there's a few little other cosmetic commands that the shell provides you. So for example we have, uh, we can import the sys module. Uh, p is a short for print. So we can print the syspath. And as you know, syspath is a list of places that my Python looks up the name of a module. It looks up a module given a name. It's also the page, which says print the object, syspath, the list. But this time, run it through the pretty printer, so we get a different look here. We've also got... Uh, an automatic parentheses function in IPython in that, uh, let's see, if we define a function, very simple there, and if we type in A34, with commas, <laughs> uh, you'll see here that it took the option here without the parentheses, added the parentheses for me, and called the function. It just it just saves you when you're rapidly typing in the interactive mode. It can uh, make your life a little bit easier, uh, you know, if you uh, if, you know want to use that. The uh, other one it has is uh, callables to make it e callables a little bit easier. So if we define x to take no arguments this time, so we're just calling it. And I want to call it. I just put slash x. And it saves me the trouble of typing two parentheses. Yeah, small small difference. Uh, when I was defining the function back up here with ABC, let me bring it back here. We now have X function with two arguments. It uh, took them as integers there. There may be cases where you'd like to make them strings. However, you don't want to have to type the quotes around it. So we can type comma x three comma four and you'll notice here that it called it by uh, first converting those arguments into strings and passing it down that's it not much not those aren't uh, a big difference a uh, slight detour here into the help subsystem now this is not ipython but ipython integrates with the uh, the pydocs system so we can ask for help on the uh, sys module and it brings us into the basically like a man page and shows you the information about this module. You can have a, a string you pass to it. In this case, I'm asking for help on the for keyword. And it will take me into the online documentation, Python docs, uh, and explain to me. It's wrapping oddly here because I have the font cranked up largely so you guys can read it. 
on your system, it may look a little better. And it also can, uh, you can put it in capital letters and it will actually give you topics. But just, let's just go into the help. We say, what are the topics that are available? So we can actually ask it for this with tutorial or explanatory material about any of these topics independent of the module or variables. So we can say, explain to me functions. I don't understand functions. And it goes in here and tells you how to create them and what, how, how there are two kinds of them and, and such like that, which can be useful. And we can exit the help there. You just hit Q to, to exit that. But the, having the help available to you is, uh, makes, makes your life a lot easier as far as uh, you don't need to keep the reference manuals at your hand. Another source of information, of course, is introspection into your environment. So let's import the regular expression module to have something to play with here. And suppose we were about to, you know, wanted to do some regular expression, but we don't quite understand what the, the arguments are for the match function. So we can say, what is the uh, definition here of the uh, RE match? Uh, it takes a pattern in the string to apply against that pattern and some flags. Or maybe we'll, we, we, don't, we want to see what the, what the documentation is about this function. So we have the pdoc command. And it gives us the base with the doc string for that. But we might want to have both together. So we want to do the p info. This is very similar to what we had. It gives us a, you know the, what what is this object? Uh, what is the base class? Uh, where is it in an interactive namespace or is it inside a class or in module? Where, which file did it come from? And uh, definition and doc string here. So it gives you a little more information. And another cool one is uh, the source. Suppose we wanted to say, well, we'd really like to understand more about this uh, function here. So let's, let's pop up the, uh, the source of it. So here we can see the match is uh, basically calling an internal function compile and passing in the pattern and the flags. Not a lot of source, but it does show you the source. And you can use this on any object, your own uh, uh, functions and methods to take a quick peek at the source without having to fire up an editor. And you can, of course, apply the double question mark operator to it. And you get basically the same as the p info. And just for completion, completeness, let's uh, take a look with the single question mark. And then we also say, well, maybe we understand the p match, and we've seen the little piece of fragment it comes from, but I really need to see the context, like the underscore compile, and, and maybe maybe some other information in that file. So let's let's take a look here at the file that that we're in which re match is uh, defined. Takes us to the top of the uh, regular expression file for this, a regular expression file. So we can actually page through the source and read the extensive uh, doc string here, our module doc string, and go through the source. And saves, uh, let's just make it easy. Okay. But suppose we also say, well, you know, I really like looking at this in my editor, not just paging through it. I'd like to have all my uh, keystrokes and, you know, nice editor features at my fingertips here. So what if we tell it we want to edit a function? I mean, we don't know what file it's in, maybe. We just say, well, we want to edit, edit this, this function. So we can do that. And here it brings up Emacs, my preferred editor. It positions the cursor on the match function and shows us the source. And I'm now in the editor, and of course I can't change this because I don't have write access to the Python uh, standard library. Uh, but it does let me clip or cut and paste out of this into my own source files or uh, use any, any keystroke macros in Emacs that I might have uh, tag searches and things. So let's edit the editor here. But uh, as you see, you can uh, between the help and the introspection features, we can uh, get a lot of information without having to go very far. That's it for this part one of five. To download the IPython software, visit the SciPy URL shown here. You can send comments to me at the following email address. Thank you.